Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you another episode of Running Red. When we left off last time, I had successfully completed for myself a bit of an ore berry farm. I've let this run for a while. I've been collecting some ore berries from it. And I have discovered that a couple of things pointed out to me by Squeak502. One, the ore berries do not grow any taller. I thought they did. I was wrong. Two, the level of darkness does not matter. In terms of their actual growth speed, there's just a level that they will start growing at, which is the same level that monsters will spawn. And three, they don't grow any faster on stone than they do on any other material. So most likely that'll make way for some more ore berries later. Right now, though, it's a pretty fantastic place to get a whole bunch of metal easily. And metal does come in very, very easily. So I used a whole bunch of that metal to get myself upgraded a bit. For one... I am producing charcoal and feeding it into this hopper, which we'll deposit into the bottom of the furnace and keep that well fed. And for two, this chest up here is going to be filled with ore berries, which will feed through the hopper into the furnace. And there's another hopper right there, which will extract from the furnace and put into the chest. And as you can see, I have a fairly decent collection of copper, tin, iron, gold, and aluminium going on. Heck of a lot more copper than tin, which is a bit odd. Speaking of iron, I've made myself a bucket and then various iron tools because I can't use a smelter yet. I don't have the capability of making grout at this time as I don't have easy access to sand or gravel or clay for that matter because I can't make hammers or dust or your typical cobble gen. So... I'm using the abundance of iron and the fact that I get lots and lots of it fairly easily to protect and, well, protect myself and make the tools that I need. Now, last time in the quest log, I had been sent blood farms needed to visit a new island, the Far Island. You can see the bridge extending into the distance. I extended the bridge slightly, cleaned things up a bit. Protected more, uh, set up more carpenters wedge slopes. If I shift, left click, right click, one of those. Maybe if I use the carpenter's hammer, which you can make the carpenter's hammer fairly easily with a bit of iron and some carpenter's blocks. Uh, let's see. Do I shift, left click? There we go. Um, hmm. That one, for some reason, I'm using planks, but you can just insert a slab and you'll get the full oak wood effect. And I have the most of the bridge built at a level that it will not spawn monsters. <laughs> I'm a bad person. This right here, on the other hand, will. Which is why it's going to have a torch right there. And this is a mess that I've been meaning to clean up on camera. So, you get the portable tank fairly, easy, uh, fairly early as one of the quest objectives. So I'm going to start scooping up the liquid blood and dumping it into said portable tank so that I can take it back home with me. And also just clean up this island a bit in general. There we go. Now I will be able to pump the blood from this tank into my blood altar. You, 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 you. Okay. That'll do for now. Just wanted to stop the blood fall. Let me grab my... Oh, I don't have... Hmm. Important facet of using this particular technology from Thermal Expansion. I need... I really love that little bridge I've got going on. Um, I need to build myself a crescent hammer. A bit of iron and a piece of tin. Brilliant. Yeah, this is going to be a fun little bridge. And I'm going to build most of my other supporting structures off of that blood altar. You'll see as I go. Okay, so I've been out to the new island as it requests in the quest chain. 
spent quite a bit of time farming up wood, building this little bridge. Um, something like 200-ish slabs, which was around, um, 40-ish planks. It's really not that bad to get out here. You could make it even better if you were to, for example, use covers from forged micro blocks and use one quarter of the blocks at approximately seven times the annoyance. So out here we find there's a pillar of dirt going all the way down to the void. And more importantly, there's some goodies. We can get some chiseled stone bricks. We can dig around the edges. Collect up some dirt. And I believe there's a spawner under one of these. Maybe it's in the middle. Anyway, we'll find it in a moment here. But yes, we can dig for dirt, which is useful. There it is. There's a witch spawner right there. We're not going to want to break that yet, though. It's too useful. We're going to want to leave that exposed and come back for it later when we can move it around. Awesome. So now our dirt problems are over. We're not going to need to process dirt ever again. We'll be able to just go digging for it. And if you've seen my live stream, you've seen me do just that. Oh, there's another one. So yes, two witch spawners. You definitely want to come out here and get this well lit so there's nowhere for them to spawn. Break the ice, and we have a bit of water. That's a very important resource that you want to be careful you don't accidentally remove. And underneath that is a dispenser, inside of which is nine steel, 16 golden apples, three bread, and four melon seeds. We'll take that home with us. The dispenser. Well, and the resources. There we go. Now this only gets us one bucket of water. We need two to be able to create an infinite water source. But that's okay. This one will get us the initial stuff that we need to start creating a farm. And the next step of the Blood Farms quest will reward another one. What we need for the crafting task is a wooden hoe and some bone meal. To craft bone meal, of course, we're going to need to set up a bit of a monster spawner. We need bone, and the only way to get bone is from a skeleton. Well, I learned just how dangerous a monster spawner could be in this pack when I was playing with it on my live stream. So, I'm going to do something a little bit differently this time than I did last. You know what? I don't like that. I want... this going on. And I'm out of planks, but I'll do... I mean slabs, but I'll do the same thing on the other side when I make myself a couple more. So... The monster spawner that I'm going to be building is not only going to be in for the short term, but I want to start building something that will have long-term potential. And I think the best way that I'm going to be able to go about that is actually to build it right near this blood altar. So let me go grab some materials, and I'll be right back. All right, so I was out here digging my dirt pit to get myself some of the materials that I wanted. And I discovered that this is some sort of snow biome out here, which explains why the water was ice, and also why I'm get to collect some snowballs now, which is pretty fun. I don't know if these are going to be useful at all, but hey, I have them, and technically I could turn them into snow blocks or cryothium. Anyway, I am heading back for the platform, and I'm going to get things started building back soon. All right, folks, here I am back on my little platform. You can see that I've extended the area of the altar template a bit, just so that I'd be able to be sure that I'm not building anywhere I'm going to need not built later. And I have myself quite a bit of smooth stone, which I'm going to use to make quite a bit of smooth stone slabs. Now, I could build something kind of ridiculous that is 100% constructed of slabs and mostly immune to the sunlight. And But the problem with that is it'll leave a lot of gaps that skeletons will be able to shoot me through. 
Now, most of you actually won't need to do this at all, because you'll have nine bone meal left. I do not. To get the bone meal, you can very simply craft nine of it uh, into a bone meal bag like this from Natura, and then uncraft the bone meal bag into a nine bone meal, and that will complete this section of blood farms right there. Unfortunately, I can't do that because I spent all of that already. Now, I know that I'm going to want a tank on this thing, feeding into it for the time being. So I'm just going to put that there right now and start emptying this 6,000 LP or 8,000 life essence into the altar. It'll go relatively slowly because it has to pump little bits into the fluid buffer and then from there it needs to slowly trickle into the life uh into the blood altar you can see that it's moving at about 20 per second it's not very fast you can't even see it in the bottom yet all right I'm going to grab stone slabs and i'm going to start building the way i want to do this is i want the edge of this to come right up to the edge of the blood blood altar so I'm going to put down a torch, and I'm going to set a slab on top of it. Because, you know, things don't need to actually be standing on anything solid in Minecraft, which is actually convenient for my purposes at this time. And the way I want this to work is I want this to be the, like, the end spot. This is going to be the one place that everything can come out to. So I'm going to stand on here, hold shift, and I'm going to build a 5x5 platform over here. And the reason I'm going with 5x5, five five, whoops, that would make a 7x7, seven seven, is because it will go right next to the pillar that is going to be one of the key components of the larger blood altar. There we are. Shift to live. The day that someone makes a mod that disables shift to live, then I will be a very, very sad mentat. Okay. Now, I'm going to put down some dirt. And... Oops, that's... Oh, you know what? I actually want these to be one down from there. So that I can see them easily. So right... There. Alright. I'm going to fix that up in just a moment. The dirt, or actually I'm going to have some stone coming off the side of this one, right there. And you'll see why that is in a moment. Let me pick this stuff up, hopefully without accidentally dying in the process. And now you can see why I want that stone to be right there in particular. It's taking the place of one of the pillars for the time being. And this is our wall. And that's going to be three high so that Enderman can spawn. And I'm going to be using something to push everything into place, but I'm not going to show you just what quite yet. Anyway, let me get this all fixed up and actually on the right level. And I shall return shortly. So folks, I was cooking up some more stone for myself. Slept through the night. But I waited just a little bit too long, and some skeletons and such spawned. There's the bone I needed. Awesome. As you can see, I'm mostly done. Oop, this guy's got a helmet. I kind of want him to come over here. A little closer. Don't fall off. Dang it. I was hoping I had a chance at that helmet. Anyway. Moral of this story, don't leave your stuff unlit this time uh, when you're still working on it. Here we go. <laughs> So yeah, got the bone I need. However, I'm going to finish out this build before I progress. It should be a lot easier if I could, you know, pay attention to this stuff over here. Anyway, I'll be back when I have some more stone. All right, there's the basic shell anyway. And now I need to go... Oh, actually, I need to do one higher than this, don't... Well, I can get away with not quite doing one full level higher by just slabbing it off like that. And if I F7, you can see that this is spawnable terrain up here. And as I fill in the slabs, stuff in the back should become red X's. 
Oh, you know what? This one. This one needs filling in. And... X, you have a question. Just to be sure, I'm going to go inside and put the last one down. And it's dark. Good. All right. So now monsters can spawn in here. And I have a nice little window through which I can shoot at their legs if I need to. Or when, they're, when they wander close, just kind of slash them a bit. And later on, I'm going to be adding a better way to deal with all of that. All right. Basic monster spawner complete or at least complete enough for my purposes at this time. And you know what? I'm going to cover in the rest of these. Because I like that more than using a bunch of torches. All right. Moving on. Now, the only problem with this, it's very close, which means that a lot of the time, monsters aren't going to spawn in there unless I'm all the way at the other edge of this platform. Or I suppose if I'm in here, Collecting my ore berries. Man, so much free stuff in this pack. Clearly, these are not intended to be a rare resource. Really, look at all that iron. That's 18 iron bars right there. Well, iron ingots. You know what I mean. Um, I want to zoom in the mini-map slightly. Oops. Wrong button, sorry about the beeping. And get my ore berries ready to process. Fantastic. All right, let's progress to the quests. First, craft bone meal. Ooh, I have a couple of arrows too. That'll make life a little easier going forward. Now, uh, next step, I need a wooden hoe, which means I need more plants. Easy peasy. All right. I'm going to let these planks process, and I'll be back when they are ready for me. Alright, got my planks, got my sticks, got my wooden hoe. Uh, let's go put some things away. I don't need to be carrying around quite as much stuff with me at all times. Hang on to the apples, get rid of the bread, and the golden apple. Actually, you know what? Hang on to the bread. We'll eat that up first. I'm likely to continue generating more and more apples over time. So, yes. Quest book. Oh, you know what I else I don't need my inventory is a dispenser. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, I can get four golden apples or a reward bag. I prefer the reward bag. They're more fun. And perhaps most importantly, I get three buckets of life, which I'm going to dump into that tank here. As you can see, the place is fairly effectively spawning. Now, this isn't a brilliant way to be able to attack things, but it's doing the trick for the moment. And I believe, because the Enderman can't see out, he also can't teleport out. I may shift this over one so that the exit is right there. Or some other variation thereof. You know what? You know what will work pretty good? I think, is if I do this number. And now, I just need to block off that hole I made. There we are. Fantastic. Yep. Now I can uh, get in there and kill things. And much more importantly... Oh, hey, look at that. I got some osmium leggings. Only 25 hit points left on this. But they do have unbreaking one, and they are stronger than my iron leggings. Yeah. It's pretty good. Now all I need, a way, uh, now all I need is a way to collect that stuff. Without having to break my way in every time. I can hear a zombie, but I can't see a Oh, there's a zombie underneath. That's an issue. Need to deal with that, don't I? Hmm. Yep. Alright, not a perfect design, but as a first blush attempt, not terrible for this pack. Hello, zombie. How did you get down- Oh, because I dug through the thing. With the thing. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Okay. 
Anyway, acquired an Ender Pearl, which is why I bothered starting that fail train in the first place. Also, some Wool of Bat, which is just, you know, a nice little extra. Okay, what do we got? We got aluminum, aluminum over here. Over here, we have our gold. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so eight of iron, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of gold. Okay, we're gonna chop you down and you down. We're gonna put down our gold here and here. And over here, we're gonna chop you down and you down. We're gonna put our gold there and there. And we're gonna put a couple of slabs right like that. There we are. And part of the reason for this particular configuration is over time I'll be able to add more and more. And when I'm uh, I believe that when I water the top one, it'll also water the bottom. I think the watering can affects one level below it. Could be wrong, though. Anyway, more gold ore berries. Yay. Mostly, I'm just going to let those grow passively. And this way, I'll be able to have two rows of them on the bottom. And eventually, if I get enough ore berries, I'll be able to plant more and more and have two rows of them accessible from the top as well. It'll be good times. Let's see. Where was I? I was turning in this quest. Oh no, I already turned in this quest. I was collecting the reward out of the reward bag. But before I do that, I want to get the ore berries out of my inventory. As well as gunpowder, bone, arrows, all of the extras. Uh, we can keep tools and such in here for now. Alright, reward bag. What do you have for me? You have a reward bag. Well, as Gideon said, that was a bit of an accident. All right, ore bag, what do you have for me? 16 copper ore berries. Cool. I wonder if I can make more bushes from the berries. Signs point to no. However, you can double your ore from your ore berries by pulverizing them. That's crazy sauce. Okay, you go in there. Fantastic. Munch, 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 munch. Let's see what's next on the list. After blood farms comes running red. Unlock two quests elsewhere. I need to deliver two buckets of life essence by QDS. Huh, okay. Well then, let's go get some more life essence. Luckily, they just gave me a QDS. Sorry, by QDS, I mean quest delivery system. Now, it's not that hard, actually, to pump from the altar back into the fluid duct. All you need to do is turn it that way. Or back into the, the... What is that thing called again? Portable tank. All you need to do is point the fluid duct out and turn it on. However, it goes very, relatively slow. As the buffer can only hold a thousand millibuckets at a time. And it takes quite a while to move more in and out. So 20 per t second or tick or something like that. Anyway, that should empty that should have emptied out by now, so I'm gonna grab these, take this with me, and we're going to go for the faster route. Lots and lots of buckets, which I kinda like. Of coming over to my well, I guess I could call it my animal island. The island of Dr. Moreau. Yeah, no. Hmm, there's a witch there. Coven witch. Okay. She's a friendly. Don't kill them. Well, I mean, you can. Not like you won't get more, but still. The coven witches are actually on your side. Uh, you know what? This presents an issue. An unexpected issue with that. I don't want this much in my tank, because it's going to use basically everything that I leave in the tank. So, we're going to come over here. We're going to put the tank down. On this, we're going to take two buckets out of it by hand. And then we're going to set it to output. Which should... There we go. Empty it out. There's now plenty in there, and the rest is filtering into there slowly but surely. Alright, we'll set the QDS down right there. Quest book. Select task. Right click. Put you down. Fill you. Fill you. And right click with the crescent hammer to output. Happens almost immediately, and this quest is now complete. I get four tin, of, and a few other rewards. Let's take a look at what I have. Red heart canister. Awesome. 
a whole bunch more life uh, buckets of life. Three more to be exact. Ton of iron for free. We're just going to hang on to those empty buckets for the time being. We get the This Place book. Ah, for example, uh, I forgot to mention the blood form uh, in Running Red. The odd device you just received is humming. It seems to hum even louder when you're next to it or when it's next to blood. It almost seems like it's trying to tell you something. Why don't we give it some blood and see what it has to say? And then you receive this place. You are dead. This place is for the dead. You go here after you die and before you move on to what's next. It's here where you must confront the fact that you are dead. It is here where you must give up your life. It is here where you must give up your blood. A little morbid. That's okay. We can deal with it. And this opens up skylines and turnstiles. Which, the very first quest of it, is the next level of suffering. You're dead? How could this happen? Why? Why couldn't the doctors at the freaking hospital save you? Why does this have to happen to you? The anger that is coursing through your veins is so intense that it is almost overpowers the pain. Maybe we can upgrade our altar and bring out some items to inflict pain on the, these other inhabitants. So you won't be alone. I want you to make eight blood runes. And if I take a look at blood runes. To make a blood rune, I first need a weak blood orb. All right, well. I can't quite just have that handed to me. Uh, drowning lessons, nope. In Our Lady of Sorrows, we have also opened The Souls of the Damned. You don't even want to think about the book. What it says can't be true. You can't be dead. Maybe we should focus on something else instead, like the growing problem of monsters. It's like they all, they all are connected by some sort of soul network. Perhaps we should investigate this. And it wants me to kill a handful of monsters. You can't actually see what monsters it wants you to kill in the book. However, it's not that hard to figure out just by poking at things the manual way. Let's make ourselves a bow to make this slightly easier. We need some string and some sticks. And now I'll be able to pull things over to me a little bit easier. And we shall start stabbing some guys. You know what? I want that gone. Lots of zombies. One last creeper in there. That's why I brought the bow. Because when you smack them, they get summoned over. Alright, you're good. But you gotta go. There we are. And I'm going to want another slab. Ooh, osmium chest plate. Ooh, that's less. That's odd. The chest plate is less armor than the iron chest plate. Weird. All right, so we're going to put a stone slab there. Ish. But I can easily walk in and grab my drops. Also to kill the freaking bats. Fantastic. All right, so that was some zombies, some skeletons. Not 100% certain of everything that I need to kill here because it's unfortunately a bit of a bug and stuck on just new as the only listing. But that will be fixed in a later version. Gideon promises. I'm going to spend some time killing some monsters because this is your path to a diamond. You also get four more copper ore berry bushes every time you complete it. And it is a repeatable quest that you can complete every about real world hour or so. However, technically... I don't need to do this. Most people will, but from one of my early reward bags, I received a diamond. And this diamond can be used, uh, not recipe, uses, can be used in a blood altar with 2000 LP to create my weak blood orb. I already have a good 10,000 or so LP in this blood altar waiting for me. So I'm just going to toss this right in and let that process through. And in the meantime, I'll let some more monsters spawn. Back soon. Correction, I will be returning tomorrow, as it is past time for me to be wrapping up. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Running Red. If you have, let me know in the comments below. If you have not, tell me what you would like to see done differently.
and I will see you next time.